Make no mistake, the current spike in gas prices is largely the fault of Vladimir Putin. It has nothing to do with the American Rescue Plan. Well, we've seen the price of gas go up at least 75 cents since President Putin lined up troops on the border of Ukraine. Make no mistake, inflation is largely the fault of Putin. They're the facts. Democrats didn't cause this problem. Vladimir Putin did. People are already, already feeling Putin's price hikes at the pump. It's gonna go up. Can't do much right now. Russia's responsible. President Biden blaming anyone but himself or his policies for soaring gas prices. And now he's found a new scapegoat, oil companies. The president tweeted this chart and said oil prices are decreasing. Gas prices should too. Last time oil was $96 a barrel, gas was $3.62 a gallon. Now it's $4.31. Oil and gas companies should not pad their profits at the expense of hardworking Americans. That all in a tweet from his account. The creator of that chart the president used called out Biden for using it out of context and tweeted a more appropriate chart showing the exact opposite point the president was trying to make. Meanwhile, Americans are struggling at the pump and dealing with record high inflation. Energy Secretary Jennifer Granholm used the deadly crisis in Ukraine to push clean energy policies. We heard President Zelensky, we do not want to see uh, any country that is held hostage to Vladimir Putin. And this is a moment for Congress to be able to act. There can be a compromise. There can be movement on this. This is a moment to have this happen. It's an urgent moment. Tammy Bruce, Fox News contributor, host of Get Tammy Bruce, show on Fox Nation is in focus now. Great to see you. Great to what be do here. you take from what the Secretary of, of Energy just said? Well, it's another example of why everything's a mess, why this country's a dumpster fire right now. They see every issue as a possible crisis that they don't want to let go to waste. We're moving out of this, the national emergency with COVID, and now suddenly there's calls for a new national emergency over climate change. So this is a dynamic where they see as possible to nudge Americans, which is a Democrat theory brought by Sunstein, there's a book about it, where you create environments that move the American people into the, the direction you want to have them go. So they see this as an opportunity. And this is why you keep hearing them say, buy a Tesla, get, get an electric car. So if you can't afford $5 a gallon gas, but you can afford a $50 or $60,000 automobile, it is a disconnect. It's a wish fantasy of policy. And this is, of course, what it tells you is that they had, they're thinking about Los Angeles and New York, public transportation, people who don't need cars, drive a bike. Whereas, in fact, this is hmm. about a disconnection with the average American. All that oil and gas goes into for this country, farmers, the production of yeah, but food. But they don't see that, though. They don't even think about it. They don't see us as people. They don't go to those areas of the country. They don't go. But, don't but I would argue that, in fact, they do know and they don't care so much because it affects their agenda and that's all they care about. Actually, I'm not completely right about that. I'm wrong. Granholm is from Michigan. <laughs> yeah, absolutely she gets it, because that's she where knows. Michigan's line, line five is, which affects about five or six states if they cut that line. And that's the administration correct. was looking at stopping the pipeline movement of oil there just a few months ago. All these that was on the know. short list. So I'm wrong. There are some of them who come from those areas. They, they do. And, and, and they still don't get and it. And even Joe Biden, he's been in politics for half a century. He, was, he knows about the Jimmy Carter years. Some of us grew up in those years. I worked at a car wash to uh, tell, this is when gas was uh, uh, being rationed. They hired me as a little kid, I was 12, to go to the, when everybody had to choose their day based on their license plate to get gas. Mm -hmm. If an adult went out to tell a man to get out of that line, a fight would start. So they sent a little girl, me, wow. to tell them that it wasn't their day. And I watched grown men cry because they wouldn't be able to get to work, they would lose their jobs. That informed a lot of my current politics about the power mm. of government, the economy, gas, but even more so, inflation. Parent, people are now having to decide on gas or food. We rationed food in my household because I was lower middle class to poor, on welfare. You couldn't eat certain things. You had to eat only a certain portion. Americans remember this. It is only my generation. It was not that far, far ago. And, and I think that Americans understand about petroleum and oil. Over 150 products are affected by petroleum. Tape, 
basketballs, sneakers, skis, clothing, all kinds of things are affected. So when you double up on that inflation, everything changes. And of course, food, because of tractors and production of food. It's obscene that this government refuses to change it with a warp speed type operation to get our own energy I've to been, save the American people. I've been talking about that. I know Senator Blackburn of Tennessee has been talking about it. I mean, we can do this because we did. And by the way, those vaccines that came along, Operation Warp Speed, still being talked about as the best in the world right now. Yes. All right, let's move to this. Senator Elizabeth Warren, probably not surprising anybody by saying this. What's happened is these companies have said, you know, we'll pass along costs, but while we're at it and everyone's talking about rising costs, let's just add an extra big dollop of cost increases to expand our profits. Your response? Well, you know, if anybody's expanding their profits right now, it's the government. It's about the taxes that they mm. refuse to remove from, from the price of gasoline, both at the state and the federal level, uh, the, the nature of inflation itself. 10% from year to year, from February to February, 10% extra in the cost of everything for Americans. It's like $300 a month for American households right now is that's what right. it's breaking down. And that's courtesy average. of the Elizabeth Warrens of the world. Make no mistake, she's in there, she's a politician. Of the Joe Bidens, of the Granholms, of the Clintons, of everybody in this system, that you're going to pay for it and you're going to join the military and go into whatever new shooting war we have. And in the meantime, you can't put food on the table. And, and she, has, she dares to deflect from their responsibility. It was always everybody else's fault. Now the oil companies, Biden last year blamed it on meat companies. All these businesses are evil and mean. Uh, the people... They blamed the truckers. The truckers For themselves. the supply chain That's right. crisis that we have. The American people, because we want too much and, you know, you know suck it up. That we've got to just suck it up and it's, uh, paying an extra dollar for things is worth world peace. Let me tell you something. We are now close to a shooting war. Children are dying and being bombed by Russia. Americans have loved ones in the military. We are sitting back once again with a government that destroyed our lives for the last two years, which we are now going to have to investigate because of COVID. And now they're going to shuttle us right into a shooting war. And they point fingers at us as being the problem. These are the same people who've controlled our lives during the pandemic. And now they're going to twist us to move us into a shooting war and into, into rationing food in our own homes. How dare they? This is what has to change in November. Not that I have an opinion, madame. Well, we got Tammy Bruce. We got all of you. We're all furious. We're furious. I had not heard you share your personal story with where you were during those years. That was so compelling, and I want to thank you for doing it in focus, because it brought everything into focus. Thank you for letting me.